Hey everybody, Sensei James here along with Coach Josh and we're going to be going over the material in our Junior Judo curriculum for semester six. This would be typically the months of September, October, November, and December. So we're going to cover all the techniques uh, along with the names of the techniques for you to help you study. Let's get started. Alright, so throwing techniques first, we have Uchimata. Uchimata is the inner thigh reap. There are different versions of Uchimata. Uh, today and for this semester for the kids, we're going to have them do what we call a Kinkin Uchimata. Kinkin means hopping or jumping. Um, for promotion purposes, as far as the name of the throw, they just need to study Uchimata, and that means inner thigh reap. But this version is going to be utilizing some hopping or jumping so they can control the fall of their partner. So, got my grips here. Uh, for Uchimata, what I typically like to do is take my right hand and move my thumb around to the back of my partner or opponent's collar. And I generally throw this throw if the opponent has their left foot forward. So either I have realized they have their left foot forward or I have done something to cause them to step their right foot back so that their left foot now is forward. This is going to be my best opportunity to throw an Uchimata. So, I'm going to step and put my right foot in the center of his feet. My left foot is going to step backwards in a circle, so I'm standing beside him. So it's right foot to the middle, left foot around beside him. And I'm standing just so that my hip is right in front of his hip or could be touching his hip. So I don't want to be in front of his hips, and I don't want to be completely away from his hips. I want to be basically right beside his hip. My hip could be touching his hip very easily. From this position, my right foot, toes are going to point, and I'm going to bring the leg up above his knee, but below his groin. So my leg comes up on his inner thigh, and as my leg comes up, it lifts his leg, and to enable me to get my leg higher, my upper body needs to come down. So as my foot and leg go up, my torso and head need to go down, just like this, in that motion. So that's the motion we're looking for to reap his leg out, the inner thigh reap. So then what I'm going to do is a couple of small hops on my supporting foot. And as I hop, I will slowly lift my leg higher and also slowly use my hands to pull him around, around, around more until he falls down. So we'll do it nice and slow and easy here. So it's right foot to the center, left foot steps around, we reap his leg up, and then it's hop, hop, hop until we finish the throw. Now, a standard Uchimata would be performed with just a straight blast. I would just blast in, boom, here, here, and then just reap strong and powerful in one big reaping motion. But we're going to have the kids do it this way again, like I said earlier, a little more control, not quite as rough on their partner. They can control how hard and how fast their partner gets through. Okay? So Uchimata, the inner thigh reap. Next throw is going to be Makikomi. This is the wraparound throw. Another throw where we're going to exercise some control because it's a very powerful throwing technique. We'll probably use the landing mats or crash pads uh, when we first start showing the kids this throw until they get really used to it. So for Uchimata, from my standard grip, I'm going to step, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I misspoke. For Maki Komi, our wraparound throw, I'm going to step in front and block my partner's leg and hip with my leg and hip. And I'm going to pull his arm underneath my armpit and then clamp my arm on top of his arm. It's important that I'm as high as I can be, clamping as tight as possible. I could also be grabbing his sleeve with this hand. It's not necessary, but it is acceptable to do that. I generally just pull with the left, clamp with the right. And I want to try to put my toes down, have my knee ready to bend in case he falls on it, and I want to get my leg to go below my partner's leg if possible. So I drop here as I wrap to finish the throw. So let's just kind of see that. Put Josh here. So right leg shoots across and blocks low with the toes down. We clamp and I'm actually going to be wrapping my body as I fall. And so to take care of my partner, I'll sort of catch myself on my elbow and forearm. Not from a straight fall, I'm throw, but sort of as I'm going down, 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 I'm just kind of catching myself here. So you'll see I didn't land on him with my full body weight. 
that's just being done to protect our partner. If we were doing the throw for real again, 100%, we would just wrap and fall as fast as we could and let our body fall on top of them. But we're trying to take good care of our partners in training so that we can have lots of good partners to keep working with. All right, last throw is gonna be the drop knee shoulder throw, Seoi Otoshi. This semester we're doing what we refer to as a right side grip, left side throw. I'm gonna change sides with Coach Josh, so you guys can see it a little better. So normally for regular Seoi Otoshi, we would take our standard grip and my right arm would release his lapel it would go underneath his left arm really high, and I would turn right in front of him, facing the same direction, drop to my knees, and pull and turn. That would be regular Seoi Otoshi. But this semester, we're doing right side grip, left side throw. Let's actually step one step this way. So for this throw, I'm going to let my right hand retain its grip. It's not going to release. Instead, my left hand is going to let go. It's going to travel underneath all three of these arms. So going under his arm, going under his other arm, and my arm. I'll keep my grip. And I'm not going to try and turn all the way around and face that way. Instead, I'm going to cut right across in front of him at an angle. And I'm going to try to land somewhere in this area. And I'm going to be throwing him in that direction. So throwing him to this back, or in my case, my forward right corner, his rear left corner. So my motion would be something like this. Step, drive the arm underneath, and then follow it immediately with my left leg. And then I'm going to drop to both knees. So through, drop, pull, and turn. Like that. So our finishing motion is the same, except it's the opposite shoulder. When we did standard drop knee shoulder throw, we were here, they were on this shoulder, we pulled down, and we always look away from them, here. With this version, he's going to be coming across my left shoulder, so I would need to pull down and look to my right. It's going to be the opposite of what we normally do. Let's see it just a tiny bit quicker, not full speed, but a little faster than the first version. All right, so Seo Yotoshi, the drop knee shoulder throw, that was right side grip, left side throw. All right, uh, let's pause that right there for just a second. I should drink water. All right, so let's go ahead and right into the uh, pinning techniques for this semester. We only have two. First one is Kazure Kesagatami. Uh, Kesagatami, of course, just means scarf hold. Kazure just means modified. So this is the modified scarf hold. There's really not much difference. It's a super, super easy variation. I'll have Coach Josh just lay on his back and hit facing the camera there. So when we do our regular Kesagatami, I would sit right here, and I would put my right arm underneath my opponent's head and neck, and I use my left, and I scoop his arm up, and I trap it beneath my armpit, and I'm also cupping his tricep or grabbing his gi and holding him tight. This would be regular case of Gatami. For Kazure case of Gatami, this left arm stays the same. The only real change is my right arm doesn't go under his head. Instead, I put it underneath his armpit on the other side, and I'm going to either cup the top of his shoulder, or I could reach over and grab at his neck or grab his lapel by his neck. So I go underneath, and I like to just cup the top of the shoulder, but it is also perfectly acceptable to take my fingers and grab the lapel or uh, top of his jacket there, his collar, and then we just sink in nice and tight, okay? Our escapes here are gonna be pretty much the same as they were for regular case of Katami. We have bridge and roll, uphill turn, leg entanglement, uh, things like that. So pretty much all of our standard escapes are the same as they were for regular case of Katami. Uh, we'll show bridge and roll and uphill turn real quickly. So for bridge and roll, he turns and gets as close to me as he can, gets his whole body as close to me as possible, grabs me around my torso with both of his arms. He puts both of his feet on the mat and he uses his legs to bridge me up onto his chest and shoulders so he can roll me over just like that and locks me into his own Kazura case of Katami. All right, for the uphill turn, he's just gonna push my head down toward the mat as he turns and turns and turns until he can get his knees underneath him and then pull out his head and his neck. 
So he pushes my head down as he turns, gets his knees underneath, and then pulls himself free so he can start to take my back. Okay, so there are lots of other potential escapes. Those are the two basic ones and the two that we'll mostly work on uh, with the kids during this semester. Okay, next pin is Mune Gatami. This is the chest hold. So for Mune Gatami, I'm gonna be beside my partner. He's on his back. I wanna make sure I've got my knees nice and wide. So I'm gonna have one of my knees in really close touching his hip and my other knee is gonna be really wide and touching him under his armpit. So I wouldn't want my knees to be close together like this. It's not a really good solid base, not well balanced. Instead, I'll put my knees out as wide as I can. For this version, we're just gonna say the chest hold. So I'm just gonna go chest to chest, reach both of my arms across, and I'm gonna be hugging his arm. Now, I can hug it like this, I could hug it this, like this, like this, doesn't really matter exactly. It's gonna kinda of get to be a personal preference and finding out what works best for each individual person as they do it. But we wanna make sure they're using their arms to control this shoulder and his arm as much as possible. I've got my knees as wide as I can, my hips as low as possible. I wouldn't wanna be up high and have lots of space for him to be able to get away. So, the basic escape we teach here is a guard recovery. For him to recover his guard, though, he has to make some space here. He has to make enough room to be able to get his knee between his body and my body. We call that our knee shield, getting our knee shield in place to protect us. Some people also call it a shin shield because you're kind of using your knee and your shin to push them away from you. So, what we have to do is realize when we are about to get pinned here and do something we call framing up. So for him to frame up, he's going to bring his arms and elbows in just like this. Got his elbows in close to his body, got his hands up and ready just like this. So when I go chest to chest, I'm not actually able to put my full weight on his chest. He's got this little bit of a buffer between us. And he's not having to hold me up or anything yet, but he does have that in there as a little layer of protection. So I passed his guard, and I went for my moon Egatami, but he framed up. This is where he needs to be. He's got this hand on my lower body, maybe my hip, my stomach, his forearm and elbow are across my stomach. He's got this going underneath my chest and even under my neck a little bit, and he's going to have his hand over here on my shoulder or bicep, tricep somewhere. So what's good about this is, if you notice where his forearm is at, it's right underneath my chin across my neck. So he's not choking me because all I have to do is lift up and the pressure goes away. But if I want to hold him down, I try to put pressure on him, which of course puts pressure on my own throat and neck. So this is designed to make the other person have a harder time putting a lot of pressure on you, make it harder for them to hold you down. So I'm going to be here, I'm holding him down anyway, even though he's got some pressure on my throat here. What he's going to do is first use his legs to bridge up and make space between him and the mat. Then he's going to shrimp away so he turns and moves his hips and his rear end away from me just a little bit. Now as he lifted me up with his legs, he would have just slightly held me up with his arms. Now he's made a little bit of space, he can get his knee to come in between the two of us. And now he can use his arms and that leg and knee and he can push away and make even more space. And his goal is to make enough space to be able to pull his legs through and get me back into the full guard. Okay, so really important here and something the kids struggle with a lot is on that bridge, they tend to always want to try to bench press their partner or their opponent. And that's not usually going to work unless they are way bigger and way stronger than the person that they're rolling with, it's not gonna happen. We have to assume the other person is at least as big and strong as we are. Usually they're bigger and stronger. But we can use our leg muscles. So he's gonna use his leg muscles for the lift. Then his arms just have to sort of hold me in place for a couple of seconds, not very long. So it's not lift and hold, it's lift with the legs and just slow them down with the arms. So you'll see that here. He's gonna lift me with his legs. He just holds me up once I'm lifted with his arms so he can shrimp. He gets on his side, shrimps away, and sets his knee shield, and then he's able to start making more space until he can eventually pull me back into his guard. So, 
That is what we want the kids working on primarily. It's going to be a guard recovery versus the chest hold. All right, all we have left are some miscellaneous mat work techniques. First one is going to be the double ankle sweep. So in this case, I'm on my back. My opponent was maybe in my guard, and maybe he stood up, or maybe I fell down, and he has walked up close to me to try and pass my guard to pin me. And for this one, what we're, what we're looking for is our opponent to make a mistake. When you're in this position standing up, you should always have one of your legs further back than the other, what we call a combat stance or combat base. You should only put your legs up close if it's in the midst of you doing something. And it should be very brief. I step forward to make a pass or something like that. We would never want to step forward and pause or stand like this for any reason. But sometimes people make that mistake. They get so caught up in what they're doing and they get so fixated on trying to pass guard that they just, bam, pop up and both of their legs are right there. So we have to take advantage of these mistakes our opponents make. Double ankle sweep is one of those chances. So what I'm going to do is take my hands and just reach down and grab the back of his heels, behind his ankles. And I'm not grabbing his uniform if I can help it. I'm making hooks with my four fingers, and I want to just hook and hook. Now I let my feet come up and put my heels right here on his hips. I just hold on to his ankles and his heels, and I don't have to kick him. I don't have to push really hard. And in fact, we want to be careful because if we really rear back and explode like a kick, then we're going to get disqualified for that. We're not allowed to do that. But what I can do is just hold his heels and ankles and just give a light little push and he'll fall over. So I hold him here and then I just give a light little push and he goes right down. And it's surprisingly effective because once our heels touch the ground, we lose our balance. It goes toward the back. Now, when we do this for real in a match or for rolling with our partner, we don't want to just lay here, okay? It's not going to count as a sweep if we just lay here. And they're just going to get back up and start attacking us again. And now they know not to make the same mistake. We've given away our surprise. So we have to make ourselves go ahead and power up. We have to sit up and then start passing their guard. And it doesn't matter exactly how we do that as long as we do it. So I'm going to grab and grab here to here, give a little push, and now you get up. I need to be moving my body up. Ideally, we wouldn't get up and go right into their guard. So what we don't want the kids to do, we don't want them to sit up and just go right here. Because now I'm in his guard. Now I have to try to fight past it. So we want them to try to get up and try to move around that guard on either side if they can. If they're going to go through the middle, it needs to be as part of a pass, not just going into the guard. So one more time. One example could be that I do the sweep, and it's called coming up, and I move around to the side like that. That's not the way it has to be, but it is a way that it could be. Mainly, you want the kids to understand we can't just do the sweep and then just stay on the ground. Next technique is going to be a leg hug pass versus the half guard. Put your head kind of an angle right about there. So half guard meaning he has two of his legs trapping one of my legs, just like that. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to hug both of his legs. I put my arms around both of his legs and a big giant bear hug, squeeze as hard as I can. I put my head here in his hip and his stomach and my legs both kick or sprawl straight back. Hopefully that breaks loose his half guard. So look, I hug both of his legs here, head in his belly and his hip, sprawl back. Now I'm going to hold on to those legs. I'm going to keep them squeezed together. I'm not going to let them go. And I'm going to start to tiptoe around. One hand comes out, grabs him, pulls my way on around like that. So what I like to do is once I've grabbed both of his legs and freed my one leg, this right hand, I will grab this pant leg and use it to hold both legs together while this one comes out. So I end up like this, holding and pulling both of his legs together to trap them. And that lets this upper arm come out, reach up and grab to pull myself on around. So I start out like this, but I finish like this, like that. For our single leg hug pass, versus, I'm sorry, leg hug pass versus the half guard. All right, last technique. Back take and flip, starting with a stack. So, 
We're going to have our opponent on his back. We're in their open guard, or maybe we were in their closed guard, and we did something to open their guard. I'm going to drop both hands through, and for this particular one, I'm going to grab his belt low by his hips, and I'm going to pull him up real tall and close to me. Now, for our partner's safety, we're not going to flip them straight over their head. So I'm not lifting up and taking him straight. I'm going to take him at an angle, this way or that way, so he can turn his head and go over his shoulder. Doesn't matter which way you go. Just pick what works best and what feels most comfortable for you. So I've got his belt on both sides. Pull him up close. I'm going to pop my leg up on the side I want to flip him to, and I roll him over. So from here, I can't just stay still because he'll come and attack me. Instead, I need to move into a position and do some type of turnover. And it really is up to the person as to what turnovers they know are like. It's okay for the kids if they just revert to their first turnover they ever learned, which is the crossface turnover. So I here on his back, shoot one arm under his chin up front, grab the elbow, other arm under his body, grab the bottom of the elbow, pull both elbows out, push with my chest to roll them over, stop myself from going too far, and maybe I finish right here in my Munegatami chest hold. All right, so that was our stack and flip, and then back take to a pin. So those are your techniques for semester six in the junior judo curriculum. Hope you guys enjoy working on them. Alright guys, we'll see you on the mat.